precious gift of God for us, with us, and in us. So I want to minister just for a few moments on this Pentecostal Sunday under step number five of our walking in the Spirit. And step number five is our willingness to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit upon. Our willingness to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit upon. There are still people in the body of Christ in the 21st century who still are struggling or battling with the baptism of the Holy Spirit as the will of God for their lives. In various denominational settings and, 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 and Christian experiences, there are still people that are living beneath their privilege because they are questioning God's word. They're, they're questioning whether God intended for the baptism of the Holy Spirit to be for all mankind or just for the apostles and the early church. And so what I want to do for just a few moments is review what the Word of God says concerning God's gift of His Spirit, of His person, the Holy Ghost. In hopes that if there are any under the sound of my voice that are still struggling with receiving God's gift for you, either here in the auditorium or online, if you're still battling, if, if you're still trying to fight your way through ignorance and wrong teachings of the past and, 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 and wrong doctrines of men, we must go back to the Word of God because God's Word is forever settled in heaven. If God said it, that settles it. Would you go with me in your Bibles to Joel, the prophet Joel, number 2, chapter 2, and verse 28 through 32, glory to God. I'm not going to be before you long, glory, hallelujah. Just, 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 just stay right there, glory to God. And as the Spirit leads you and guides you, come on, just put a little bit soft uh, melody underneath the, the Word of God because the, the, the Word of God riding on the, the waves of music oftentimes penetrates the heart and soul in, in a way that allows God's will to be done in Jesus' name. And Joel, or Joel, Chapter 2, beginning with verse 28. It shall come to pass, come about, after that. This is the uh, actual, the, the uh, amplified. I, I don't know if I gave you that, so it, it'll read just a little differently in the um, King James. And it shall come about after this, that I shall pour out my spirit on all mankind. And your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions even on the male and female servants I will pour out my spirit in those days I will show signs and wonders displaying my power in the heavens and on earth blood and fire and columns of smoke the sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. And it shall come about that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved from the coming judgment. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there will be those who escape as the Lord has said even among the remnant of survivors whom the Lord calleth or calls. The prophet Joel, over two millennials ago, became the mouthpiece of God in saying that first and foremost that he would pour out his spirit on the children of Israel because they were the ones that were entrusted to with the word of God. And it would begin in Jerusalem. But it wouldn't stop in Jerusalem, but there would be an outpouring upon all flesh. All is all. All is everything and everyone. Hallelujah. And so it is the intention from the beginning that God would pour out his spirit upon us all. 
Why? Because of love so deep that he didn't just want us saved and independent from him. He wanted us to be one with him. He, he wanted his very essence, his very spiritual DNA to be our spiritual DNA. That, that which makes him God, he wanted us to be the benefactors of that essence, the essence of God himself. He wanted you to have his person on the inside of you and you to have the oneness with him. Glory. This is the mystery of Christ. This is the revelation that the Apostle Paul understood. He said, we said, minds could not conceive or neither could ears hear, neither could it be understood and comprehended by all that man has, but God will be able to reveal it by his spirit, that God will be able to make it plain through an experiential presence, the person of his Holy Ghost. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Jesus in the last final teachings before he was getting ready to complete his assignment, before he was ready to, to go to the cross, be the passion of God. Payment in full for the sins of mankind. He's teaching the final instructions he's giving the things that are vitally important for the, the saints of God to understand past and present and always. And in John 14, beginning with verse 16. Can you, give, can you give me verse 15? Hallelujah. Can you pull that up? If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Why can't they receive? Because the world cannot receive because they seeth them not, neither knoweth them, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. The spirit of God, the comforter to be with you, in you. Glory, hallelujah. He goes on to say, hallelujah. Verse 26 he says, I, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And verse 26 reads, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, Jesus said, All that I am he will be for you, to you. He will be your personal life coach. He'll be the one that will answer all of your questions. He'll be the mind of God to you. He'll be the source of everything that you need. He'll be your comforter. He'll be your counselor. He'll be your strengthener. He'll be your life teacher. He'll be your all in all. He is the spirit of the living God. He is my spirit that will be shared with you in you. Glory, hallelujah. And he'll be with you forever. You will never be alone. You will never be alone. John chapter 16. Jesus, in his salvation, went way beyond just giving us a free ticket to everlasting life. Soundness of mind and safety deliverance from evil, healing, all included in his salvation. But he wanted us to be one with the Father. See, we, we couldn't understand what he was praying in John 17 when he said, and Father, now I pray that they may be one as I am in you and you are in me, that they may be made one in us. And not only these that are with me, but all that will believe on what they preach and proclaim, they would be benefactors. He prayed that what he had for the original 11 was available for all those that will receive him as Savior and Lord. Do I have anybody in here who's received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Would you just wave at me for a hot minute? Glory, hallelujah. He was talking about you and me. How many believe Jesus gets his prayers answered? Hallelujah. 
He was praying that we would receive the oneness that John talked about when he came up after being water baptized and saw the spirit of Holy Ghost descending like as a dove and resting upon him, resting upon him. God's desire for you and for me and for all who would call upon the name of the Lord is not just to be saved and have the infilling of the person of the Holy Ghost. That's wonderful. That's awesome. That is amazing. That, that experience that he talked about with the woman at the well, the woman that had been ostracized because of her lifestyle, the one who was the cleanup woman, the woman who was the partner of five men who weren't, didn't belong to her. And Jesus, in his unconditional love, says, I, there is a time, the, uh, the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshiper will worship God in spirit and in truth. And if you knew who it was who broke the taboo, if you knew who it was that w broke all the traditions, all the racism, and the one who asked you for water, who is a Jew, and that Jews and Gent uh, Gentiles or, or Samaritans don't, don't have anything to do with each other, if you knew who I am or was, you would have been the one who broke the taboo, kicked over the sacred cow. You would have been the one. And I, I would give you a source of water springing up out of your belly, which is a well of water springing up into everlasting life. She said, give me, give me this water that I don't have to come here and labor anymore. I won't be shamed anymore. I don't have to come out here in the middle of the day and everybody knows the depth of my sin, the depth of my degradation, the depth of my wrongdoing. I, I want to be free from this. He said, I go get your husband. And he took her to the place of repentance. That's the way he had to take each and every one of us to a place of repentance. Uh, the identification of that in ourselves, all of our righteousnesses as filthy rags. The Holy Ghost doesn't condemn, but he convicts us of our sin lovingly. Shows us in yourself you are on your way to hell with no answer, but there is a solution. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And because of Jesus, there's a new life for you. There's a baptism in the Holy Ghost. Nicodemus, you want to know how the power of God will work for you, in you, and through you. Ye must be born again by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the indwelling of the person of the Holy Ghost. But there's another operation that you need to understand. The operation of the Holy Spirit upon us. Hallelujah. Go with me in your Bibles to John 16. John 16, glory to God. John 16, verses 12 and 13. Just, to, just some scriptures that will give us the foundation and the assurance of knowing God wants you fully endowed. God wants you operating in the fullness of his person. In John 16, verse 12, Jesus is teaching again in these last hours before his death. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear. That shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit is given to us to enlighten our walk of faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I only say what I hear my Father say. And now he's saying that the Holy Ghost is not going to witness of himself, but only the things that the Father gives me to give you to, to know. That's what he's going to say. Because there is no isms, there's no schisms, there's no divisions, there's no power struggle. God is one Father, Son, Holy Ghost. And he desires that that oneness be our oneness. 
that Jesus is the head and we are the body. You are the body of Christ and the oneness of Jesus Christ is your oneness in the Father. When you said yes to Jesus, you became one with the Father, one in the Son, Jesus Christ, one by the person of the Holy Ghost in real time. There's a real witness on the inside of you. He's alive and well and he is the spirit of the living God and God promised him way back over 22 two millennia ago and said, I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters will be empowered from on high. It won't be the power of human beings. It'll be the power of the almighty, omnipotent, everywhere present God. There is a power of God that is available right now to those that believe, those that will operate in the spirit, those that will say yes to Jesus. My, my life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself away to those that say yes and yes, yes, and over and over and over and make a commitment, make a commitment each and every day. I want to walk in the Christian way. I want to be led by your spirit. I want the light of your word to be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. There is a consecration that we must enter into moment by moment, minute by minute, day by day. I wish I had somebody that knows what I'm talking about to say, yeah. The Holy Spirit is the water that takes the dryness out of dead Christianity. The Holy Spirit is the wet in the water. He's the river of living water. Jesus, on that last day of the feast, stood and cried, If any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink, and out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Holy Ghost is the living water. Holy Ghost is the living water. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. There's nothing like a refreshing glass of water. You, you, you might like all kinds of soda and you might like all kinds of other things, but the sometimes that you just can't be satisfied unless you have the water that refreshes. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. Jesus teaching us, Jesus reminding us through his apostles, through his word. Verse 45, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, thus it was written, it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, every race, every color, every national origin, male and female, young and old, rich and poor, amongst all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. He had to have a starting place. He started with the, the nation of Israel because they would be the scribes. They would be the keepers. They kept the law as a treasure. They understood and comp comprehended. It was perfection if it could be kept, but no man could keep it. It became a taskmaster, it became a teacher, it became a, a standard that no human being in themselves could handle. But Jesus, Jesus, the word made flesh, the author and the finisher, the lover of our soul, the one who makes us whole, Jesus, 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 became the gift of life, became the gift of flesh. Jesus became the Lamb of God for you and for me. And we can never forget, we can never forget what he's done for us, how he set us free, how he brought us out. We can never forget. So on a Pentecostal Sunday, we need to remind ourselves the skill excuses have been taken away. How can an all-powerful God fail us? How can an all-powerful God forsake us? We must press. We must press. We must press. And all of us have to, have to admit, we only press so much. 
we get preoccupied, we get entangled with all of the entrapments and all of the offerings and all of the opportunities and all of the all of the all of the all. And we forget to ask Jesus, what is your will? Your will be done. If I really want your best, I need to ask you on a daily basis, what is your will? I know what I'd like to do, but is that what you want me to do? Oh, it's so hard to consecrate on a regular basis because it still requires the human submission of not my will, but thy will be done. And we still got flesh that we still are working to learn how to put it under and to realize that even if God gives us 120 years of self-sacrifice in exchange for a glorious eternity, it's worth it. He's smarter than us. He's wiser than us. Whatever this life may present, good, bad, and ugly, if we do it in Christ Jesus, if we do it in the power of the Holy Ghost, if we yield and say, Holy Spirit, give us the empowerment, give us the wisdom, give us the knowledge, give us the ability to be what God has paid the price for us to be. Our lives are not our own to you. We belong today. One day, he said at a time. Tomorrow I'm going to take care of itself. But today, Jesus. Today, Jesus. Today, Jesus. Be Lord and Savior in my life today as I consciously make a decision to let your spirit lead me and guide me. He said, Thus it is written, and thus it behoove Christ to suffer and to be raised from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all the nations beginning at Jerusalem and ye are witnesses and you are witnesses of these things and behold I send the promise and behold I send the promise of my father upon you upon you upon you not just within you but upon you I need him to be within you and I need him to be upon you I need for you to have a source of of God to, for your sanctity and for your goodness and for your ability to, to, to win but I need for you to have an endowment upon you so that you can go out and be a gift to a lost and dying world and you need the gift of my spirit upon you so that you can walk in the power the power of the Holy Spirit when the when the devil tries to shoot darts at you from this way and direct that way and every way when you're out there in your livelihood when you're out there amongst the, uh, the ungodly when you're out there trying to be a light for Jesus Christ and the devil is trying to knock you down it's the power of the Holy Ghost it's the power of the power of the God upon you that's going to give you the ability it's going to give you the ability to say yes when you need to say yes and say no when you need to say no to be able to stand and endure and not and endure the persecution and the suffering and the naysaying and the backbiting and all of the things that are of this world because the world wants to take us out. The kingdom of God suffering violent, but the violent take it by force. Glory, hallelujah, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Can I get an amen? Oh, he's greater. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. And we have to take time to declare the sovereignty of our God. We have to let the world know we know who we are. Glory to God. Amen. We are not impotent, but we are walking in the omnipotence of a Father God who hung the sun in the sky. He's the one who flung the stars in the sky. He's the one who carved the valleys and the oceans, oh God. Our God is God, and he always has been, and he always will be God. And it's time for us to remind ourselves to stir up the gift of the Holy Ghost, stir up the person of the Spirit of God, and let God be God. It's time for us to come out with a shadow. It's time for us to kick down the gates of hell, because the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. It's time for you to declare your destiny. It's time for you to speak for what let us save the Lord. It's time for you to say, my God has said, this is what I, I'm the head only. I'm not the tail. I'm above and I'm beneath. I'm blessed in the city. I'm 
blessed to the spiritual. I'm blessed to the basket. I'm blessed to the store. I'm blessed coming in and blessed going out. All of your promises are God are yes and amen, oh God. And no weapon formed against us, including COVID-19 and cancer. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. Oh, Lord. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon for me is going to prosper. I command my organs. I command my body to get in line with the word of God. I command my body to line up with the word of God. Jesus paid a price for my deliverance from all sickness and all disease. God said with long life, he'll satisfy me and show me his salvation. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way. You, you paid the price for this temple of God. My life is not my own. You paid the price. So have your way in me, oh God, today. Flood my mind. Flood my mind, oh God. Wash my mind from all the strongholds that the enemy has been holding against me, trying to keep me in doubt and unbelief, oh God. I break through. I break through in the power of the Holy Ghost. In the light of your word, I break through in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank you. Hallelujah. Sit down for a minute. Glory. Hallelujah. And ye shall be witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye, wait ye, wait ye. Where? In Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, until ye be endued with power from on high. And he led them, and he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And then it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. Imagine what that was like. The son of man, the one that had ridden in the boat with them, that had riddled, ridden on the donkey with them, the one that they had lived with for three and a half years, the one that had miraculously died on the cross and rose from the dead, now blesses them and then lifts up his hand and begins to ascend. He wasn't flapping his wings. He lifted up his hands and began to rise right before their eyes. You are God. You are Lord. You are Savior. You are healer. We worship and adore you. We glorify. We magnify you. We can't wait till you return. The angel, they were so mesmerized. The angel said, you can't stay here in this state of amazement. You got to go forth. Be about the business that he told you about. The same way that he rose and left you, he's going to come back. Keep your head to the sky. While you are about your father's business, keep your eyes upward. Don't be looking down here because anything down here is fake and phony. Know who your God is. Know what he said. Holy Spirit will not allow us to be deceived. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. But that was the end of how he wrote the letter of Luke. If we want 
the rest of the story, we have to go over to the other book that he wrote, wrote the book of Acts. Go with me to the book of Acts chapter 1. As we conclude out of the first two chapters of the book of Acts, Dr. Luke's details on the day of manifestation of the gift of the Holy Spirit upon. Acts chapter 1 verse 1, the former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that he threw the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with the whole, with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. And he said unto them, in verse 7, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power. Somebody say power. But ye shall receive power. Say power. But ye shall receive power. Say power. This is dunamis. This is dynamite explosive ability. This is miracle working power. This is power to move the mountain. This is power to receive the blessing. This is power to walk in the anointing. This is the power to be a gift to, of God to here, there, and everywhere. This is power when you lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. This is the power to say and declare what thus said the Lord and watch God manifest in miracle signs and wonders. This is the power of the Holy Ghost. Ye shall receive power. Say, I receive power. I receive power. I receive power. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost. He said, you shall receive power. We shall receive power. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. But ye shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you. And what? The, he says, you shall be witnesses. You shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria to the uttermost parts of the earth. It begins in Jerusalem, but it spreads to the United States and to Great Britain. Even though they didn't even exist back then, God already was in the future. He was already waiting right now on this day that there would be a Pentecost 2022 and that you and I would be together so that there would be an outpouring for all God's people, fresh refillings and infillings of the Holy Ghost. There's one initial infilling, but there are many, there are many, there are many, there are many refillings. Glory to God. You can go back and drink and drink and drink and drink and drink and drink again and drink and again and drink again. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. They were not drunk as they were supposed, but they were filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. And the power of the Holy Ghost may make you look like you are enjoying something of the world, but it's better than the world. It don't give you no hangover. It don't cost you nothing, but it's freely given. Oh God, God, thank you. Thank you for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for a fresh outpouring in this day and this hour, oh God, upon this church, oh God, upon the body of Christ here this and everywhere, oh God, on our loved ones, our family members, our friends, I thank you for a fresh pouring out the, of the Holy Ghost. We declare we receive it, oh God, on this Pentecost day, oh God, we thank you in Jesus' name, 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 we thank you, Lord. Miracle work and power, oh God, miracle work and power, oh God, the ability to do what seems possible with men, oh God, it's possible with you, oh God. We receive, we receive, we receive, we receive all that you have for us, oh God. We won't know, we won't say no, we won't shake our heads, no, we won't say because of the limitation of our intellect that it's impossible, oh God, but all things are possible to us when we believe in the power of the Holy Ghost, in the power of God Almighty. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We praise your holy name. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy. Lord, no. No. We say no. We say no. The devil is under our feet, oh God. The devil is under our feet, oh God. The devil is under our feet, oh God. The devil is under our feet right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 Our God is greater. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me verse 12. Verse 12. Verse 12. Glory, let me finish this up. So we can shout the victory and, 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 and be done in Jesus' name. <laughs> verse 12. Then return they unto Jerusalem. From the Mount of Olives, called Olives, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. Now, now today, because they cut cut pathways, you can get from the Mount of Olives over to the city of Jerusalem in a matter of 30 minutes or so. No maximum hour if you walk. But it took a whole Sabbath day's journey for them to get back to where they were going. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where a bow bow. Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zelotes and Judas the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women, with the women, with the women, with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and Mary mother Mary the mother of Catholicism, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. And in those days, well, let's drop. I don't want, I don't want to go into, uh, Alfie, uh, into, into that uh, text. Take me now to sec the second chapter of Acts. So they were all gathered together they were in prayer in one accord. And now, and now, 50 days, 50 days, 10 days after Jesus had left them, 10 days of prayer and consecration and oneness, glory to God. Hallelujah. In one accord, in agreement, 120 people in one accord, waiting on the promise of God. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all, all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and filled all the house where they were sitting. And, and it sat upon each of them. And, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled. Everybody say all. Oh. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Here's where most people struggle. People think that God is going to take their tongue and just automatically just begin to, to, to force them. No, it's not all God and it's all, not all you. You have to let God use your tongue. And give the manner a style of speech, but you have to make the sound. You have to open your mouth. Glory, hallelujah. You have to be willing to participate. Glory, hallelujah. And you have to shut down your mind because it ain't going to sound like your English. It's not going to sound like anything that you've ever heard from of and that you've ever rehearsed or you have ever practiced. No, it's a move of faith and love in the power of God. God, you said it. That settles it. I receive my gift. I believe that the gift is for me to be empowered so that I can fulfill my destiny, so that I can call my, the call 
plan and purpose that you have for my life, I can find out what it is. You can reveal to me things unknown to me. Glory, hallelujah. When I prayed everything, I know how to pray. You can pray on my behalf in the knowledge base of Almighty God. You can be everything that I need, everything that is exceedingly abundantly more. It's only the only reason I'm here today is because I prayed in the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost said unto me, you ought to go to Nashville, Tennessee. You ought to start a church exactly the way you've been trained and you have 24 months to get yourself prepared and be there. I was at a Holy Ghost meeting out in Tulsa, Oklahoma and in the power in the middle of the Holy Ghost meeting while we were practicing, when we were practicing, uh, operating in the spirit, God gave me a real time, a real time experience. That was the experience that got me here over 26 years ago. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Two years of preparation, 24 years and now seeing the faithfulness of God. Is there anything for God to too hard for you? You know, there's anything for God to do for you. There is nothing too hard. Even when you've been disappointed, even when it seems like things aren't working out, God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And you got to let go and let God say, God, I don't know what you have for me, but I'm ready to receive all that you have for me. I'm trusting in you with all of my heart and leaning out to my own understanding in all of my ways, in all of my ways, in the good times, the bad times, in the disappointment, in the things that I can't see, in the things that you allow me to see, oh God, I'm going to give you the glory. I'm going to give you the honor. I'm going to give you praise. I'm going to praise my way to the victory that you have for me. And I'm going to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You alone are worthy. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, you lead me. You guide me. You be what I need all the day long. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. The desires of your heart. He said, delight yourself in me. Delight yourself in the Lord and I'll give you the desires of your heart. Do you believe that? It's the word of God. It's the word of God. If we'll believe, God will cause us to receive. After, you know my testimony, after my son passed away and our family was devastated. Thank God. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Began to lead our family on a journey. Tonda Linnea was so traumatized she called in a false alarm to, uh, to 911. Didn't realize as a kid. They, got, they could trace back the phone call and everything. And they called back to grandma's house. Said, did somebody just call 911? Grandma was like, no, no. Oh, we just got a call, and they played back the recording. It was her voice on the line, traumatized. In this life, Jesus said, you're going to have tribulation. You're going to have disappointments. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And the, what, the way I'm going to give you the ability to overcome the world is by the same way that I overcame the world, in the power of the Spirit of the Father. It's in the power of the Holy Ghost that we're able to endure the tough times of this life. Having done all to stand, stand in Jesus. Hallelujah. Charlene was kind of young, so she didn't really, really realize everything that was going on. But later on, in her young adulthood, stuff started coming out. How it had traumatized her. But by the Holy Ghost, by the Word of God, by pressing toward the mark for the prize, we can make it through. We can get through it. It's painful. Yes, Jesus said, if any man follow me, if, look, follow me, let him take up his cross and follow me. There is a cross that we bear. There are some heartaches that we share. Glory, hallelujah. And they're real, and they're real, and they're real, and they're painful, but they are for the cause of Christ when we endure them and we go through them and we say, Lord, sustain me and keep me and help me to keep 
keep on pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in you, Lord. I don't know if I can get through this day. I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to pray. Holy Ghost, help me, help me, help me. I need you. I need you. I don't know what to say. So I show up under the name of the be under the name of 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 Whatever it is, whatever it is, doesn't make a difference. Whatever it is, cry out to Jesus. Cry out to the Lord. Let the Holy Ghost be your strength. Let it be your counselor, your comforter. Let it be your helper in the midnight hour. He's never leaving you and he's never going to forsake you. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we have to do it. 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 It's not just a one-time thing. He said, Lo, I am with you always, every day. Even to the end of the world, I'm going to be with you. That's how important the baptism of the Holy Ghost is. To sustain and keep us through the earth and through all of the trouble and trial and all that's going on around us. And when we think we've seen the most wicked and evil thing, Satan shows up and does something even more despicable. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the lover of our souls. So when we pray, we pray for an outpouring. We pray, Lord Jesus, be bigger than life. Be bigger than the negative pundits and reports that flood the ethers and try to make the world believe that the, the enemy of God, the spirit of Antichrist, is greater than your Holy Spirit. We will not be silent, but we will let our light so shine before all that are a part of our oikos, our circle of influence, before the world that they see our good works and you be glorified and you be magnified, Jesus. We are careful to give you the glory. We're careful to give you the honor. We are mindful to give you the praise. Oh, Jesus. Let this word be so comprehended and understood that it transforms us into the very image and likeness of Christ. And oh God, we'll be so mindful to give all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, now and always, 